Welcome to Waypoint Connect. It's so great for me to welcome Jacqueline Whittle to our session. Jacqueline, welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dave. Our topic is worship. So Jacqueline, as a member of the worship yes. team in Waypoint, but also taking responsibility there, taking lead with, with Tian and his team, you'd be the, the ideal person to talk to about worship, right? Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest question people have is, what is worship? And what I like from our conversation is that we're challenging that perception that mm -hmm. you need a talent to be a worshiper. So okay. why don't you tell us a bit more about that? Okay, for me, worship is actually a state of being. Worship is, it comes from your heart. So. Worship can be anything for me, whether it's a kind word to someone, a smile, a you know, a smile to a stranger or for a stranger. And um, yeah, most people, they connect worship with singing because, mm. I mean, you talk about a worship leader and a worship band and, you know, you see them on Sunday. So worship for a lot of people is singing and playing music instruments. But for me, that's only a part that's actually a small part of worship because mm. worship is an everyday life. Worship is the condition of your heart because everything you do that brings honor to God or actually blesses God with your life mm. is a form of worship. And that, that is for me. Worship is that, that close intimacy face to face with God. Mm. And um, yeah, for me, ab absolutely being on stage is a, it's a very big part of me for worship. And, um, but every day from there, on, not just on a Sunday. Yeah but literally every day. So what you're saying is it starts with intimacy with God, Yes. but it just flows from there Yes, and in it, your and interaction with other people. Yes, and it flows in different talents. It flows in whether you can draw a picture or whether you write a song or sing a song. And as I said, even a smile can be a mm. form of worship because it's really the condition of your heart and being that intimate relation with God and projecting it onto other people so that they can see God in you, mm. so they can experience God. That for yeah. me is the essence of worship. In, in other words, you could be doing what you normally would do in your everyday life. Yes. But if your perspective is, why am I doing this? How am I glorifying God mm. through this? Then I do this as a worship to God. Yes, it's, it's a mindset. It's, it's definitely a mindset, an everyday mindset yeah. of, of what today can I do that will bring God honor or that can be a blessing to God? Yeah. Who can I, um, you know, whose life can I touch? What today is going to be, um, come across my life so that I can mm. bring worship to God? So, yes, it's definitely for me an everyday mind-setting yeah. condition, heart conditioning. I love that because mm. that translates into what we would see as menial tasks every day. Yeah. Um, as transforming that into opportunity to worship God yes. because I'm doing it for somebody else so that they experience something. Yes. And it also brings a different perspective to serving at church because now suddenly something as seemingly insignificant as making sure that the chairs are in a, in a straight row yes. is, is a worship unto God because I'm creating the best possible environment so that people can come and experience God. Yes, because you'll never know if there's a, a um, maybe someone with OCD that comes in on your, your, your morning experience and if one chair is not perfect, then it can distract them from the whole experience mm. and they can miss something integral that's been said or, or done. And, and, you know, for, yeah, so for me, even the chairs, you know, packing the chairs and, and greeting at the front gate and, mm. You know, that's the whole experience that's, that leads up to, in, in, in eventually to the message, so that their hearts and minds are being prepared. Yeah. So by the time they hear the words, um, it's, it's, you know, then it just drops where it should drop. Yeah. And, you know, that because we do the singing segment before the message, so that also to prepare the atmosphere, and I think, you know, that's where um, so many people think, oh, that's the only part of worship, because mm. it prepares the atmosphere. But we actually prepare the atmosphere from the start of the gate, the greeters, the first mm. um, greeters, the impressions to the, you know, the whole coffee shop and everything. So everything mm. we do on a Sunday and throughout the week, because you know, you never know who you can meet through the week. 
and invite them to Waypoint and then, you know, they pitch up on a Sunday, but they've been prepared in the week yeah. because you worship God with your whole everything, mm. just your everything. Yeah. As we close, um, why, why did you say we do the singing before the message? Why didn't you say the worship before the message? Um, we a whole, uh, can I say, ons ingesteldheid, yeah, for our approach. lack of <laughs> English word, approach is to get the unchurched and detached people engaged. So if you talk about worship and they don't understand worship, then, then um, you kind of lose them. But if mm. you talk about a singing segment, it's like, okay, we're going to sing some songs. Yeah. We've got a music segment. Yeah, I, I can and relate to that. Yeah. So and I, and I know what I'm expecting. Yeah. <laughs> And you don't use lingo that they don't, un they don't understand because yeah. you never know who pitches up on a Sunday who's never had any experience of church before. And if you, you know, you use Christianese, then they kind of lose them. So Yeah, and, and, and that losing can, can start with them arriving with this perception. Yeah. I'm not welcome and I don't understand what's happening here. Yeah. So using language that we're really familiar with yes. could just reinforce that idea that I actually don't understand what's happening here, which means yeah. I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah, and I'm not that, part of this. And that closes no. them up to the message that they receive. Yes. So that, that's an awesome idea. Mm -hmm. But I, I love the point that you made that worship isn't for people with a specific talent, yes. that we're all called to worship God and we're all able to worship God. And it looks mm -hmm. differently for each and every one yes. of us. And, and for me, the most important is like, don't compare yourself to someone else because then you lose what God put in front of, mm. in, in front of you, sorry, <laughs> inside of you <laughs> to use to His glory. Yeah. So if, if you compare yourself, oh, I want to I wanna worship like that. Yeah, person. I wish I could sing yeah, like Tian. Yeah, I wish yeah. I could sing like Tian or play an instrument or draw like Danny. You know, you, you, you kind of compare and then you lose what qualities mm. you have. I mean, you can have the most awesome smile and, and that person, you know, person that you smile to will experience something from yeah. God that you thought, that. yeah, that you actually missed. But just kind eyes, mm. you know, there's so many forms of worship. And I think, you know, be satisfied with what you have. Embrace what you have and use what you have to bring glory to God and use what you have to worship Him through your interaction with people. Mm. Whichever form it is. Awesome. Great. Thanks a lot. Guys, there you have it. We're all called to worship. You're able to worship. God created you to worship Him. Just think about it differently and look for those opportunities to do it. So while you do it, remember, have a great week.